Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. At the start of this episode, we're going to be in the space plane hangar, working on the new space station that we are going to set up around Armstrong. That is going to be the facility that is going to take the enriched uranium that we are going to produce on the surface base that we set down in the last episode, and turn that into all-important fission pellets, which we are going to use for our far future interplanetary vessels with the pulsed fission drive. It's going to be really cool. It's a very good engine. I'm very much looking forward to being able to use that. Anyway, like I said, we are going to be in the space plane hangar for a bit. Whilst I um and ah and try and figure out exactly how I want the space station to look, I kind of like making my space stations be quite asymmetrical, just because, you know, it's, it's a little bit more interesting than having something be completely symmetrical. Asymmetry is good, although this does turn out incredibly asymmetrical, so I'm not sure if that's the best. But I'll leave that up to you to decide whether you like the look of this station once it is finished. It will be about the first four minutes of this video, so if you want to get to actual, well, not, not launches as per se, but me building this, well, I think skip ahead to about four minutes and you should get to the, the, the real meat of the episode, I guess you could say. And one thing I do want to say about these episodes at the moment, obviously, I am releasing one every day. This hopefully should come out on the Wednesday, which means it will be a day after the previous one. And I have been keeping them at about 12 minutes long. I just kind of want to gauge what, what people what people's opinions are of that, because they're a little bit shorter than what I was doing before. But I'm tending now to do three missions in an episode, and it just so turns out that yeah, it, it roughly equals to about 12 minutes. Do you like the short style episodes, which I can probably get out more frequently? Or would you rather have more content in a single episode that comes out a little bit less frequently or more infrequently? Let me know in the comments uh, what your opinions are on that. Anyway, what we have built for this is a, a little bit of a habitation section. So we've got that big dome and we are going to inflate that once it's in space. That does actually save on mass for some reason. But we are going to need material kits, which I will find out at a later date in order to do so. I did not realise that when I was putting this together, but I do find that out later on, which is a bit sad. But it leads to an interesting decision that I make in a future episode regarding what this space station is actually going to be capable of. Yes, we are also going to turn this station into a production facility that will be able to make spacecraft or additional modules from it, very much like the totally reliable assembly platform that we do have up in orbit at road at the moment. We're going to have somewhere where we can build new craft around Armstrong, which actually will be incredibly useful for when I want to put down a much larger surface base. So with regards to the surface base of yesterday as well, one thing I want to talk about that is there were quite a few suggestions for names and I really enjoyed looking through what some people did have to say, what they wanted to name it. There were quite a few that suggested Aldrin. Because obviously the moon is Armstrong and there was Collins Aldrin and Armstrong that went to the moon in 1969. Now, I don't want to call that base Armstrong, uh, not Armstrong, I don't want to call that base Aldrin. The reason why is I want to call my main surface base that I put down on the surface of Armstrong Aldrin at a later date. And this space station that we are going to be setting up right now what I want to do is call that Collins Station, because, you know, I thought that was quite fitting. Michael Collins, obviously, being the guy that remained in orbit upon the command module whilst Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong went down to the surface. I just thought that would be a nice way to name things. I've not gone through all of the names yet, and I will decide relatively soon what we will call that. But, yes, that, that will be coming maybe in a couple of episodes' time when I finally pick a name for that surface mining outpost. Anyway... We have now built up the first part of this new space station, and unfortunately, the way that extraplanetary launch pads works, when you transfer the kind of resources across to the new craft, it just throws them anywhere. I don't know how to kind of target where I want the resources to go. So for this, we need enriched uranium in the engine at the back. It's the atomic deliverance engine, or the the Emancipator engine, I believe, which does require enriched uranium to run. However, we cannot transfer any additional enriched uranium into that part. So in order to get over this, I went into the persistent save file and I went and added it in manually because the way that I built it in the vehicle assembly building or in the space plane hangar, I did put all of my enriched uranium in that engine part. 
However, because Extraplanetary Launch Pads was being a bit janky, it moved it into the enriched uranium fuel tanks that we have got on the front of this vessel. And due to the way that that engine works, well, we can't transfer that across. So the only way that I could get enriched uranium into that engine was going in and modifying the persistent save file. It does feel a little bit cheaty, but I did have the required enriched uranium on here. It's just a little kind of like hurdle that I had to get over with the way that that mod works. A bit unfortunate, but we are able to overcome that problem. Burn our way over to Armstrong, and in the blink of an eye, we are here setting up our first ever piece of our first ever space station in orbit around a different body other than road. Yeah, this is going to be the first space station that we set that isn't in low road orbit, which will be kind of cool. I do want to set space stations up in quite a few spaces. Places. Yes, so this won't be the first, but it, it definitely will not be the last either. So we are going to... I was thinking of sending this stage smashing down into the surface of Armstrong to clean it up, but then I also thought, well, it's a massive nuclear engine. We don't want to be spreading nuclear radioactive waste all over the surface of Armstrong if we want to come back here later on and utilize all of the resources. No, we don't want our Kerbals running around in hazmat suits, so I thought we'd land that rather softly rather than smashing it into the surface. And with that all being done, we have now set that up, I think in about a 150 kilometer orbit, if I can remember. Oh no, no, about 85 kilometer orbit around Armstrong. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna come back to the totally reliable assembly platform and of course work on the second module of the space station. So the first module was going to have that Vulcan nuclear smelter. And that is the facility that will take enriched uranium and process that into fission pellets. It can also make fission particles and nuclear salt water, but we don't have the required resources in order to do that yet. That is something that we probably will add to the station at a later date in this series. Anyway, we have now built up the second module. This is going to be the habitation module. This is where our Kerbals are all going to stay on their duration on the station. Yes, we need Kerbals in order to man that smelter, or not necessarily man it, but with engineers on board, the system that produces fission pellets from enriched uranium, if I recall correctly, is much more efficient. Well, not necessarily efficient, it's much faster. We'll be able to produce fission pellets much faster than if this was all a uncrewed space station or an uncrewed facility in space. So I wanted to get Kerbals over here anyway, and like I said earlier on, we are considering building new spacecraft from this space station as well, and we absolutely do need a crew in order to realise that, because there are unmanned parts that can build for you, but they're pretty naff. They take forever to be able to build anything. Anyway, once again, we are at Armstrong. What we're doing now is just plotting out our manoeuvre to reach the first part of that space station. Collins Station. I, I, th I think I'm not going to ask for names for this. I think this will be, like I mentioned, Collins Station. It, it just seems really fitting for me. But we were able to get to the first part rather quickly and slow down rather nicely, probably blasting that first part of the station with liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen that is coming from that exhaust. Maybe I should have, you know, been a little bit smarter and slowed down a little bit further away, but I am an impatient person and I wanted to get there as quickly as possible. So when I plotted out my rendezvous, I think my closest approach distance was something like 8 metres. And that can prove problematic at times because you can end up smashing into bits of space station. But luckily that did not happen today. But there we go. We have now docked the second part of the space station. Obviously that habitation at the end is going to be blown up or expanded. We're going to fill that up. So it will be a little bit thicker and it will make this look a little bit better down the line. But at the moment it's just... One long, narrow tube, which, yeah, I'm, I'm not overly keen on how that looks, but it will look better, I do promise. It will look much better later on. So, we're now going to come back to Trap for the third time in this episode and work on the third and final piece of the space station that we will be sending over, which is just going to be all of the life support for the station. Basically, this is going to contain our recyclers, our agroponics modules, all of our fertilizer and supplies so that when we do send a crew over to the space station, which will be happening in the next episode, and of course we are going to be using the new and improved reusable Manta in order to crew the station with a few little added extras. 
Yes, they will have food and they will have oxygen and water and all of those important resources that a Kerbal does need in order to survive. But once again, we have just performed our burn over to the station and I'm just going to give you a quick little bit of a highlight reel of all of the burns that we do perform in order to get us over into our encounter with that space station. Nice and quick. I love the auto time warp feature. This is something that I have only begun to use recently, as well as the new way of plotting out maneuvers. And, and I say new way, I think it's quite old now. It's probably been in since about 1.7, where you can plot out maneuvers without messing around with the node. You can do it on the map screen. It's, it's great. I've never used it before, but I'm a bit of a dinosaur when it comes to KSP. So I was, I was using just the regular maneuver planner and also mech jeb every now and then to plot out my maneuvers. But there we go, we have once again got our encounter with the space station. The life support module has arrived, and now the space station, as soon as we dock these two parts together, will be fully operational, or at least we will be able to send a crew. We are going to be adding more modules to this eventually, over the course of the next few episodes, but for now, that is all we are going to do, and that will be the end of this episode once we have docked this to the station. I'm sorry that I'm still sick. It's it's hard to talk whilst I'm like this. So it's it may the, the voiceovers may not be perfect for these coming episodes, but I, I am trying. I, I do want to get a video out every day whilst I do have some free time. So please bear with me. Anyway, thank you for watching this episode. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, why not give it a like? If you've really enjoyed it and want to keep up with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I have been Karnasa and I will see you later.